Hey, thanks for checking out my channel. If this is your first time here, and if this is not your first time, and you've actually come back to watch more of me, I love you. Thanks for subscribing, and uh, thanks for thinking about subscribing. If you're new, hopefully you click that button. I'm John Stark from MacTheMovieGuy.com, and this is my review of Do Revenge. Uh, sounds like it could be a creepy movie, right? Anyway, um, I'm a blind film critic, and uh, I, I, I can't think of a reason why that would hurt you on this, although I did hear from another critic that the driving scenes in this look so fake. So there's a thought. Um, that's, but that's, that's, uh, that's not me. Um, I can't comment on how fake the driving scenes look for you visual people. I can just talk about the film. Did I like it? Is it good? Are the characters good? Is it funny? Is it not? Did it work? Uh, what, 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 what's up with this, you know? So, um, and because I listened to other critics, I did kind of hear some thoughts that I get to address in this film. Anyway, um, so, what is Do Revenge about? Well, it's kind of complicated, believe it or not. This film is a little bit, considering the shit that Netflix has been pushing upon me this year, um, I expected Do Revenge to be just another film. I was going to come on here and be like, this film. Last week they released End of the Road, which was pretty decent. This week they're dropping Do Revenge. So, I we're on an upswing I will give them that. <laughs> We're turning things around. Um, I'm starting to forget me time. So, um, this is a kind of a prep school, dark comedy uh, about a girl who is wronged in a very promising young woman sort of way. Um, but also the teen comedy version of a promising young woman kind of way. Um, she makes a video for her boyfriend, and it gets released, and everybody sees it, and then she kind of is shamed for making the video, and uh, she ends up punching him, and of course she gets disciplined, and then he, it seems like he's walking away scot-free, because he's like, oh, my phone was hacked, I didn't do it, and of course she's like, of course he did it, um, and it's like, if you think that little of your boyfriend, why did you make the video? That was my first thought. I was like, if you, if your immediate thought is, my boyfriend sent this video out, why make the video if you think your boyfriend is capable of doing that? And if you don't believe that his phone was hacked, if you didn't even, she doesn't even consider it. Like, she's, she doesn't even have a conversation with him about it. She just, like, walks up to him and he's like, my phone was hacked. And she's, and she's like, punches him. <laughs> it's, it's like, what? All right. Uh, why were you dating? Um... Anyway, so Sarah Michelle Geller is the headmaster, which props. Uh, I'd like to see her coming back. I know that she has avoided acting for multiple reasons. One of them being uh, that one of the last things she did kind of before taking a break was uh, her sitcom with Robin Williams, which was like the last thing he did before um, leaving this earth. So uh, I think she's been dealing with that. Um and uh, she did an interview where she talked about that and uh, as being one of the reasons why she needed to take a break because everybody was like, where's Sarah Michelle Geller?" And she was like, well, you know, uh, I've had a really hard time coming out of that. Um, and uh, so she's here and she's delightful in the role. Uh, it's, a, it's a thankless small role, but I thought she was a great uh, addition to this teen cast. And the rest of them are all just kind of rich, spoiled brats. Um, our main character, uh, the one that got the video, is not wealthy and is there on a scholarship. Um, and uh, she ends up running into this other girl who, you know, it, it for some reason is trying to be nice to her. Uh, and then finally, when she allows herself two seconds to listen to this girl, it turns out she had a similar experience. And when they get to talking, they become friends, and then they decide to 
uh, do each other's revenge. So it's like that movie from earlier in the year where they decided to break up each other's uh, relationships. Two, two friends tried to break up and get each other's spouses back, but then they fell in love. Remember that film? Nobody saw that film. Okay. Um, so... <laughs> This is, uh, and then they kind of go about that. And I really don't want to tell you much else because, uh, despite what other critics said, I thought it subverted my expectations. There were some critics who were like, they always do that thing where they're like, I saw the twist coming, like, a mile away. This film was so, so obvious. And I was like, I don't really think it was that obvious. Um, I don't know. I... Uh, I kind of liked how this film played with it. I kind of like how the film played with the idea that it didn't it didn't totally tell you up front that the boyfriend was a douchebag. Um, it kind of lets you figure that one out for yourself. Uh, meanwhile, our main character, uh, the main girl who got the video sent out, I forgot her name. It's something stupid. Um... And, uh, she ends up actually being this sort of unlikable, unrelatable character. It's sort of like if Regina George became the main character of Mean Girls. <laughs> if we just, like, flipped the perspective. Um, that's kind of what it felt like. But, uh, so she's not really in touch with anything. She picks up this boyfriend that feels very much like how Aaron did in Mean Girls, just kind of like a normal dude. Um, and uh, she still is kind of a mean girl herself. So she wants to do revenge against people who she sees as being preppy bitches, but she herself is a preppy bitch. She's just one that grew up on the wrong side of the tracks, uh, so to speak. You know, she's just the one that doesn't have the trust fund. <laughs> But she has inherited all of the qualities and the traits of the same people she wants to take down. Now, the other girl that's transferring in doesn't have those same traits. Um, she has a different story, a different backstory, and it is entirely interesting. And I do remember her character name. It's Eleanor. Um, and uh, only because that becomes oddly important um <laughs> so um if the other girl's name had actually become part of the plot uh i would have perhaps remembered her name <laughs> but unfortunately um eleanor's name became part of the plot maybe i've said too much anyway um and the film goes very in an unexpected direction and i kind of loved it because we've seen this film done before. We've seen Heathers. We've seen Jawbreaker. We've seen Mean Girls. We've seen um, even, God, this year, Honor Society. You know, I mean, we've seen these films where uh, bossy teens, uh, bratty teens or whatever, try to get revenge on one another. And... Uh, so, how do you do that film differently? Well, I think this one did. I think it pulled it off, and I can't tell you. So, I guess, yes, I've hinted at the fact that there's a twist to this film, and it's not, don't take this film at face value. True. Um, but now you're going to be looking for a twist, which sucks, because I did not know there was a twist in this film. But if, I, but if I'm going to go against every other YouTube critic or every other print critic, and say, I liked it because of that, I have to acknowledge the presence of it. So um, I liked the fact that probably in the third act, it switches it up, and it becomes something different. Um, no, it's not something... <laughs> it's not some M. Night Shyamalan shit. It just flips the script, and I loved it. Uh, <laughs> so... Yes, um, yeah, I, uh, I thought the film was funny, I thought it was clever, uh, it's a film I'll remember, uh, I won't remember anybody's names, but <laughs> it's a film I'll remember, 
Um, I would say one of the downfalls, uh, if I have to talk about the negatives in this film, is that it doesn't do a great job of establishing any characters other than the two main girls, and I guess you could call them the two main boys. The Max, who is the one that sent out the video, and Russ, who is the one that's dating, I still can't remember her name, Dory or something, I don't know. It's the worst review ever. I should have remembered her name. It's funny I can remember Max and Russ, but I can't remember the lead character's name. Anyway, so, yeah, um, those are probably... Uh, with the the two guys, Eleanor and the lead, uh, the four characters with actual any sort of development. It's sad that Sarah Michelle Gellar actually has more character development than some of the other teen girls that we're supposed to hate in this film. Um, and boys, actually, because Max has some other, like, side friends. And one of them, I, I think the most character development he got was that we saw him do drugs. I was like, cool. Is, is that his, that's with his character? Cool. All right. That's character de development. Anyway. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it could have fleshed out the cast. Mean Girls does a great job of that, of showing us the whole cast. Heathers does a great job of showing us the whole cast. This one does a great job of really propping up the leads and their story and making us, making everybody else just sort of seem like a blur. Um, like they just don't even matter. Which is odd. Uh, I would have appreciated more setup for all of those characters. So that we could... I think one of them was like named Tara. Uh, I, Yeah. I just I needed more from all of those characters. Um, but could have been more fun that way. Anyway. That's the negative side for me of the film. Is that I didn't think this film did a great job of the supporting cast in the film also i did i still totally didn't buy there's somebody that gets <laughs> uh that gets hurt i was hearing a song from mean girls and musical when someone gets hurt when i was saying that out loud that's why i laughed anyway uh there's a, a character that they go after in this film that i'm still not 100 percent sure why they went after <clears throat> and there's another character that's referenced who uh pops up who also is sort of uh, has been wronged and is kind of in like a mental institution and I didn't fully understand what she did to deserve to be where she is. So it it all goes into the character development of supporting characters in this cast, I think is the only thing that really holds it back um, versus the other films that this film is like, which did the good ones that it's like anyway, um, not like Honor Society, but um, the good films did a great job of making the supporting cast worth your time. So, anyway, that's it for me on that. Yes, it does have audio description. It has audio description from a company I've never heard of before and a guy with a one-word name. Um, that was amazing. I was like, because it, it sounds like a human, but when when he has this like... I don't can't remember the name. I'm bad with this. Uh, I don't have papers to look at. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't look at my my note cards. Um, but he uh, yeah, he has like a one word name, and it made me think: is is he AI? <laughs> like I did have that thought, but I think it's a human voice. I'm I'm like a hundred percent certain. Either it's that, or he's the best AI ever written. Uh, it was so human. I mean, I've listened to Robo Description before, and it's terrible. So if this is the new Robo Description, I'm on. I'm on board. If this dude was Robo Description, pff, sign us up. Like <laughs> this guy sounded like a real guy. I just think he's a guy that goes by one name. I think he thinks he's Madonna, but of the, you know, audio description narration community. Anyway, <clears throat> um, I don't know why I'm losing my voice. That's it. Probably a cue to stop talking. Uh, just watch this film. It's fun. Uh, it's fun. It's it's a nice teen film. It's it's yeah. The characters are unrelatable. I saw some people complaining about that. They're like, why are they always prep school kids? Why can't we ever just see kids that are like us? And it's like we do see kids that are like us all the time in films. 
like we have kids from middle America all the time in teen films. They're not all prep school films. But the fun thing about prep school films is when you need to hate characters, it's a lot easier to hate those characters than it is to hate the characters in middle school America films. You know, uh, generally when you see a film that is relatable, that comes out of, that features a youth cast um, that's in like a struggling school in the bad area of town, uh, a film like this wouldn't, it wouldn't be structured like this. It would be structured in a completely different way because those kids don't have any privilege to lean back on. They don't have daddies to call to make things go away. So that's why the film doesn't work there. That's why it has to be prep school kids because when they're calling their dads to make things, to sweep things under the rug, uh, you have to be of a certain status to do that. You have to be a privileged, uh, bitchy kid to do that. So... That answers your question, critics who for some reason can't figure that one out. They're like, I just, why can't these, why can't just be kids in a normal school? They would never, their parents wouldn't be able to get them out of anything. They'd be calling their dad who'd be like, you know, like a realtor or something. And what's he going to do? You know, <laughs> I don't know. Instead of their dad, who's like the head of a fortune 500 company and, and was worth like nine figures. So whatever anyway that answers that question uh so watch watch this film i'm gonna give do revenge a b plus yes one of the more entertaining films this year it just needs a stronger supporting cast that's it that's all it needs it does have maya hawk but i i didn't feel like there was a specific cast member here who stood out to me acting wise I just thought all of the teens were interchangeable and any of them could have done the same job. But I did need a better and stronger supporting cast. So I hope you enjoy it. It's one of the better things Netflix has done this year. I don't really care what other critics say. I've sat through a lot of shitty Netflix films to get to this point. <laughs> so uh, let me know what you think in the comments. And uh, as always, you can check out my website, MacMovieGuy.com, for more reviews. You can go to the audio description project, adp.acb.org, uh, and you can see what else has audio description and where you can watch it. And the audio description project, uh, the, the adna.org, um, will tell you more about narrators. Anyway, that's it. I gotta go review something else, and I will see you on the other side. <laughs>